So I am Louise Finlayson, and I'm going to be presenting simulation of penetration depth of ultraviolet radiation into skin as an aid for phototherapy. So I'm going to start by quickly discussing a little bit about phototherapy. Um, so phototherapy is defined as the use of non-ionizing radiation, usually within the UV spectrum, to treat photoresponsive disease. There are several different types of phototherapy treatments, and these are usually distinguished by the wavelengths that they use. I don't really have time today to discuss the full range of treatments or even go into much detail, but in general, there are three main categories. Um, the first is UVB therapy, and this is further split into broadband UVB and narrowband UVB um, using the wavelength ranges shown here. The second is UVA, which again is split into UVA1 and UVA2. And third is PUVA, which is the use of sorolin and a broadband UVA source. Um, and sorolins are generally used to increase the amount of UV absorbed, and this increases the potency of the treatment. So how is it actually decided? Which phototherapeutic source is most appropriate for use in each case? Um, the short and probably very simplified answer is to look at the penetration depth of the source. UVB light is absorbed in the epidermis and upper dermis. And so it's generally used to target diseases like psoriasis, atopic dermatitis, and vitiligo. Um, UVA, on the other hand, is absorbed deeper into the dermis. Um, and so UVA-based therapies are used to treat diseases both in the epidermis and in the mid to deep dermis, such as scler scleroderma and systemic sclerosis. The longer answer, of course, would say that there is much more to it than this. Uh, getting the light to the correct depth is one factor, but actually understanding the biological mechanisms that happen as a result of this light and how this affects the effects that this will have is something that requires further thought and investigation. However, knowing exactly what wavelengths and also what intensity of the wavelengths from a specific source for reaching the target area is a good start to finding the best treatment regime. And so it's clear that being able to access detailed data showing exactly this would be extremely useful when considering both new and existing phototherapeutic treatments. So our aim was to produce a database where parameters such as skin layer thickness and source spectra can be inputted, um, such as this spectra here, and a data set showing the resulting intensity of each wavelength of light at each depth within the skin is produced, um, such as something shown here. And uh, later on, I'm going to discuss exactly how this result is produced. We use Monte Carlo radiative transport methods to simulate the path of light into a virtual multi-layered skin model for the wavelength range of 200 to 400 nanometers. MCRT uses repeated random sampling of probability distribution functions to predict the path of light following a decision-making process shown in this flowchart here. The probability distribution functions vary depending on the location within the skin model and also are formed using optical properties that can either be directly measured using skin samples or theoretically calculated based on the chromophores present. So the skin model we use consists of five layers and was designed to simulate the skin of Fitzpatrick scale skin type 1, as shown here. Um, the model is made up of 100 by 100 by 650 individual voxels which make up the five layers of the skin. Um, the top layer is the stratum corneum. The second, third, and fourth layers consist of the larger mel melanin-less epidermal layer in layer two with a thinner melanin melaninized epidermal layer just above the basal layer in layers three and four. Finally, layer five is the dermis. The chosen absorption and scattering coefficients for each layer can be seen here for the wavelength range of 200 nanometers all the way to 1000 nanometers. Um, these were compiled from several different sources. For simplicity, the optical properties only vary between the layers and are kept uniform within them. And as there is a lot of variability in the thickness of the stratum corneum, both between and within individuals, models with different thicknesses were also looked at. Um, and used to test how much of an effect the stratum corneum actually has on the penetration depth 
considering the high level of absorption it has within UV wavelengths. So this is the results obtained using a flat spectrum of light from 200 to 400 nanometers. Each of these lines represent a different percentage of the incident light and the plots show the depth and also the skin layer that this reaches. On the left we have results for the original 20 micrometer stratum corneum thickness and then the plot on the right compares results from several different thicknesses of stratum corneum um, for the 10% incident line. To check that these results were within the expected ranges, they were compared to in vivo measurements of light penetration into the forearm taken by Meinhardt et al. And we can see here that they are within the same ranges. Here, the black lines represent the um, in vivo measurement result range and at 300 nanometers and 340 nanometers, where the light has reached 37% of the instant value and the red crosses here show the results from the model data. So as an example of how these results could assist clinicians studying the best treatment options, we can look at a clinical trial completed by Corti et al. in 2006 comparing low-dose UVA1, medium-dose UVA1, and narrowband UVB for the treatment of localized scleroderma. They found that although all treatments improved the skin condition, medium-dose UVA1 was shown to be most effective. And looking at this results plot may at least in part help to explain these results. Scleroderma is primarily a disease of the dermal layer, and so light reaching this layer is very likely to be more effective. Narrowband UVB has a wavelength of 311 to 312 nanometers, as shown here, and we can see that somewhere between 10 and 1% of the incident light reaches the top of the dermis. UVA1, on the other hand, has a range of 340 to 400 nanometers with a peak wavelength of 370 nanometers. And here we can see that actually a wavelength of between 10 and 50% is reaching the top of the dermis. So as a higher percentage of the original intensity of light is reaching the affected area, it is likely that this treatment is going to be more potent. So this model then provides a very convenient way of visualizing light penetration into skin and being able to form theories about the effect a light source will have when planning clinical trials. This model has actually already been used by Barnard et al to demonstrate the potential of using sorolin plus UVA1 to treat palmoplantar pustular psoriasis, where standard PUVA is not always effective enough due to the thickening of the stratum corneum by psoriatic scales. They found a large increase of up to 20 micrometers in the penetration depth of 10% of the incident light using UVA1 sources on psoriatic skin, demonstrating the potential of using this treatment option and providing a basis for planning a pilot study. So as I mentioned before, we wanted to make this data available and easily accessible to anyone that wants to use it. And this is now possible to do via a web app at this website link. Uh, the, web, the app works by allowing the user to upload their chosen spectra, which is then combined with the simulation data to produce a data set of intensity at depth in the skin model for every wavelength in the chosen spectrum. So far, there is only data available for one stratum corneum thickness of 20 micrometers and one skin type of Fitzpatrick's scale skin type one, but the plan is to allow, is the plan is to add more data to allow different parameters to be chosen. Here I've used the app to look at the depth that a far UVC germicidal lamp can penetrate into skin, which is something that we have been focusing on particularly in the past year or so. So the main limitation of the model is that it relies on pre-acquired knowledge. If you want results for a specific circumstance, you need to already know the parameters such as skin layer thickness. It also relies on the availability of accurate op optical properties, which are difficult to find currently, especially for fixed spectric scale types above type two, and are also hugely variable between individuals, meaning that the model can only be used for approximation and it is not a one size fits all. This is something that will hopefully improve in the future, and as it does, the model will become even more useful. So we have used Monte Carlo radiative transport methods to produce a data set showing the intensity of light as a function of depth into skin. Data produced by this model is useful when designing and optimizing phototherapy treatments, as well as investigating the safety 
of light sources such as far UVC room disinfection lamps. This data set has been incorporated into a web app as well where it can be combined with a spectra of the user's choice. Thank you for listening. I'm now happy to take any questions. <laughs>